Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Erica Gilliam and today I am going to be sharing my June bullet journal spreads. Um, I painted them with watercolor and I started painting in my journal back in January of this year. Um, before that, I hadn't wanted to because I didn't want my paper to ripple or tear or I don't know, I just wasn't comfortable with this idea of art journaling and I decided to give it a go in January and I fell completely and utterly in love with it. So um, this month I am really kind of trying to bring together this love of nature and all of that. So um, on the left side, I had this to-do list from my recent shop relaunch and um, I felt like it was a total eyesore. So I decided to um, just cover it with some indigo paint. If you ever have a page that you don't like, just cover it with some indigo paint and then use some gold on top of it and it's perfect. Um, but I decided to start that and then on this other side, I'm adding some moss and some vines. So I wanted to create something that was kind of simple, um, but still really detailed. And I feel like I really love how I did this. Um, throughout this video, I have a um, combination of real time and sped up clips. Some of them I will skip parts like what I just did there as well. Um, I wanted to show that it isn't super fast. Um, this took me about six hours. Well, I have six hours of footage. It probably took me about eight and a half hours because there was some stuff I didn't film. But um, as a whole, the entire process takes a long time. And I think it's hard sometimes when you see these sped up videos to feel like, I don't know, not be prepared for how long this takes. So this took me about eight hours. Um, and I have a mix of that real time and that sped up. So, um, so I'm adding the second layer of the indigo over here on this other page. One of the things about covering up a page like this that has writing is it does require a lot of layers um, and thick ones. So lots of drying. Uh, that's okay though. It was really fun. And... Um, so I'm kind of laying out where I want the moss to go. I want to continue that moss so that the whole thing kind of feels cohesive. Um, so I'm laying out where I want the moss to be. Um, and then I will go back in and add that. Um, painting moss like this is really, really simple. Um, it's just olive green, indigo, and gold. Um, sometimes you can add some other colors in there if you feel like it. But um, for this, it was just really simple. Um, I started with the green, added a few dots of the blue, and then added the gold on top. And it's when it dries that it really kind of has this magical feel. So um, the vines for this are inspired by the pothos and philodendron that I have all over my office in my art studio. And um, I really wanted that feel of just nature. I don't know, spread out all over the pages. So I'm really, really happy with how these turned out and they were so simple to paint. They um, were just really simple shapes with a little squiggle at the end. <laughs> so now I'm going to start with the gold moon. Um, I get so many questions about what gold paint I use. Uh, this is the um, gold and silver fine tech palette by Calero Colors. I have removed the colors that I would be using in this spread. Um, and I use this for all my paintings. It's so beautiful and opaque. Um, something that's a bigger section, like what I'm painting right now, will require maybe a couple layers so that it looks even um, and then I'm going in with the brush and just doing these really thin gold lines um, around and I want it to look like the ivy is flowing around is like going around it so I have to like cut different sections of it so it like 
Some of it I'm covering the vine and some of it I'm not so that it looks like it's like wrapping around. And then I wanted something on the indigo. I felt like it needed that. And so we have these carpenter bees that are hanging out all over our porch and that is just summer to me. They just fly all over the place. So um, I added some of these bees on this, um, this page with that gold as well. And um, I wanted to kind of fill a space and I love the patterns of honeycomb. So I kind of created this honeycomb design over here. One of the things about journaling and painting in a journal is that it doesn't have to be perfect. My lines aren't all perfect and matching. They're not all even. And I really like that. It just kind of feels natural. And then of course, some splatter because I feel like everything is better with a little bit of splatter. This is the first time I ever did a Dutch door in my journal. I've never cut the pages like this. So I took an X-Acto knife and I cut around the vines that I had done. And I love it. I'm obsessed. So I have a um, cutting mat underneath and I've just slid it in under that page so that I can cut out that, that page. And, um, or, and then I went around each of those those things to create this beautiful Dutch door and I am completely obsessed I think I will be doing a lot of these On the next page, I really wanted it to be a continuation of this first one. I wanted it to feel like the two pages were almost flowing together. So I took those same vines and I continued them on this section that the Dutch door would cover. And um, I, this was a very simple page. I wanted to be able to have a place to put some goals for the month as well as my gratitude. So. I am very, very happy with how this one turned out. Um, making these little vines is so much fun. I <laughs> love just, I don't know, it's really satisfying as you kind of go up there and I tried to do them in lots of different directions and um, not overthink it too much. And then I just did another one just down the middle of the page so it could bring the two pages together. Um, but again, I was trying to keep it really, really simple. So I wasn't trying to um, go too crazy on this page considering how many detailed paintings I did in this spread. So this journal is the Lloydstrom 1917 and I'm really glad that the paper allows me to use paint on it. It um, does ripple a bit, um, but that just, I don't know, that makes me really happy. I love hearing the crinkle of the pages. So um, after I finished all the vines, I took my Sleepy Flowers sticker pack that I have in my shop and I wanted to just add a little bit of this botanical detail without having to do too much. So I added that sticker in there and then I took a um, long skinny paintbrush and I started lettering, adding all the lettering to this page. So first I'm going to put the dates on here and I wanted to just put the entire month so I could see the dates of the month throughout it. And all of this was hand done. So it does take time. I made sure to do some of that in real time just so you can see that it's not a fast process when you are um, hand lettering with a brush like that, it, it isn't quick, um, but I do really love the effect of that. So um, typically in my journals, 
when I'm painting, I will do my lettering by hand. Anytime, unless I have a pen that I'm specifically using, it will be done with a brush. I am so excited about my summer equinox spread. It is everything I imagined it would be. I started over here with some of that moss. I really wanted to bring together the elements that I had had that I'd used on the other pages, and um, I left the top open so that I could write a title. Um, this page is specifically set up for self-care activities. So I want to fill it in with um, self-care ideas so I can have it as a reference for um, things that I can do just to take care of my physical and mental health. Um, so I have the vines here, or the, the moss here. Um, again, this is just olive, paint, indigo, and gold. Um, for the summer equinox spread, I had this idea of a sunflower being like the sun in the corner of a picture, and um, I'm not sure if it reads that way at the end, though I don't really care because it looks stunning, so I'm, I'm okay with it, but um, I created this sunflower in the top corner so that I could um, kind of create those sun rays, I guess, was the, the idea behind it. Um, and I really, really love how this sunflower turned out. And then um, I went through and wrote out Summer Equinox. I wanted it to feel like it was almost blowing through the page, um, flowing with the wind or something. And it would be nice and bright and colorful and rainbow it's pride month so you know i gotta have some rainbows in here and um though it's not exactly in order but it is rainbow so it's okay i'm okay with it but um <laughs> i included this moment where it was a little slower so you could see exactly how long this took it wasn't quick um everything was pre-drawn but filling this in definitely took some time and um Really what I was trying to do is I would go through and do a quick wash of the color and then I would go in with a little bit more pigment and fill it in so that at the end it ends up a little bit splotchy. I really love when um, watercolor has those harsh edges in the midst of something like this when it's just a wash. So I really like the textures that that created and it's interesting to me watching this back to um, remember what I was doing. There's these connections that your brain puts with what you're doing at the time. So I have been re-watching Game of Thrones and um, so I can actually remember exactly where I was at in season three um, while I was painting this and it's almost like it's playing in my mind. And I just, I love those connections. That's really fun for me whenever I watch something or listen to a book or something like that. While I'm painting, I create these, these memories connected to it. So I wanted to bring um, that honeycomb style that I had on that first page into this one. I felt like there needed to be something behind the letters. So I added this honeycomb and for a little while I was a little bit worried that it was too busy. Um, and I ended up remedying that later, but I um, am really, really happy with how these turned out. I think it's really cool. And the gradient of the colors behind it just really kind of emphasizes the rainbow, the bright summeriness of it all. This part took a very long time, painting each of those um, little honeycombs. That was very time consuming, um, but totally worth it. So um, I've gone up here and I'm adding more details to the sunflower, starting to build up those colors. And 
Um, this is where I'm really glad that the paper doesn't fall apart because I did a lot of layers, um, especially on that sunflower of paint over and over again. Now I'm gonna add the um, lettering and it just says Letha June 24th. Um, this is Midsummer Celebration and um, I wanted to do this page just dedicated to a little bit about Letha and a little bit about what to do during this time. So that's really kind of what I will use this for. Next, I just really started to build up those layers. I wanted to kind of create some outlines and this is where the magic starts to come through. Sometimes when I'm working on pieces, I will feel really unsure of them until I put in those final details and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, no, I love this. So for this, it was really incredible to see the power of the shadows. So adding just these little bits of additional brown here really helps it feel alive. It helps it feel like it's more real and not just um, this flat flower there. Um, and then I went through with that brown and I added an outline to all of the letters for Summer Equinox and that made a huge difference. Um, I felt like you kind of lost the letters before I did that and um, they kind of blended into the background too much. So just this little touch of adding a little bit of brown along each of the letters really helped them stand out and kind of gave it a little bit more life, which I just, I'm really, really happy with. It's so interesting how I can watch these back and see my insecurities and yet um, it's always the same answer, like just finish it. I just need to finish it. So here I'm adding some gold um, details and a little bit more um, details into that sunflower um, just to kind of make it pop even more than it already did. And I totally love that. And then the final thing that I did on this page was just add some information about Letha. Add a little bit about what to do, um, how to celebrate, and where my mindset needs to be for that. So this is my summer equinox spread and I hope you love it as much as I do. I don't typically use the bright rainbow colors. Um, I tend to get stuck in the same color palettes I use over and over again. So this was a really fun way to kind of try something new and push myself out of that typical comfort zone. So we've made it to the final page of June spread. And um, if you've noticed, I haven't done any habit trackers or anything like that. I really minimize the amount of planning I'm using it for um, as far as like big planning and just using it for everyday things as well as journaling as a whole. One thing that I really want to start doing in my bullet journal is adding journal entries and art about the things that are going on in my life and around the world. My goal is to be able to go back through my journal and be able to remember what was happening and also to remind myself and keep myself in check. I think um, it can be really easy to get complacent over time. You know, we can protest and um, be active 
and vocal for a period of time and then we kind of go about our lives and forget about the things that are going on and forget about other people and so my goal with this was really um to create something that keeps me accountable so every time i'm going through my journal i can be like hey am i doing enough if i'm being honest this was totally out of my comfort zone though um i don't art journal often like this and I also um, decided to do skin tones but I didn't want to just do normal skin tones I wanted them to be rainbow galaxy-ish skin tones so um, really kind of playing with lots of color and that was just completely outside of my comfort zone and that's one of the things that I love about journaling and art journaling specifically is it's a safe space to try something new and there's no pressure of this has to be a finished piece, this has to be done well even, um, but it's, a, it's just a creative outlet and that's really what I wanted to use this for. As I kept working this, I honestly felt really insecure about the entire thing until the very end. I was really frustrated because I felt like I had something in my mind and it was not turning out exactly as I pictured it. And the reality is it didn't. Um, it kind of took on a life of its own and I think that that's something that I often forget in art is that my pieces tend to take on a life of their own and become what they were meant to be rather than just what I envisioned them ahead of time. So. You can kind of see me really building up the layers on this hand and I'm just adding color and on top of color and on top of color and detail and it really took it a little while to kind of become something. I think this page alone probably took me about four hours. I kind of thought I would be able to do it in about an hour, hour and a half and, and I couldn't. Um, I just kind of kept working it and I was really scared that I had overworked it because it's very, very easy to do, but in the end, I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. I had this image of these galaxy witchy nails that I wanted to paint, and I want to do them on myself, but I'm really lazy. So instead, I just put, put them in my journal, and um, I'm really, really happy with how those ones, those turned out. It looks really cool, though I feel like until the end, they look super weird over there. They're just like these flat nails. Anyways, um, <laughs> but as I'm working this background, I added in an additional layer of just like covering the whole thing with the indigo. I felt like I knew I wanted to put a quote there and in order to make not only the hand stand out, but also the quote have a space that wasn't distracting, I needed a little bit more background and then I just took some water on my brush and I put little droplets on um, that background to create the textures. This left page is kind of made to be a brain dump. It's somewhere that I can put ideas and kind of think through stuff in a, in a safe environment. So um, I've left that open generally as far as the page goes so that I can write things in and um, I want to use it not only for like painting ideas and projects but also um, a place to kind of think through things that I can do um, to s be more vocal and active um, in my business and online than I have been in the past. So this is where everything starts to really come together and the magic starts to happen. I added this quote um, in my favorite gold paint and it says, in a racist society, it is not enough to be non-racist, we must be anti-racist, Angela Davis. And I really love that quote because it kind of calls out action and saying that it's not enough just to feel a certain way, but, but we have to completely remove those ideals. And those are things that, you know, as a white woman, I 
have been raised in this society and I have to kind of call out the places that I have contributed to this. And that's what I want from this page. I want it to be something that I can kind of look back and go, hey, keep myself in check as I do that. So um, after I finished the quote, I started adding in the stars. I am using a white gouache by Liquitex, I think is the brand. And um, that same brush that I do all my lettering with so that I can get those nice details and lines. Um, and this is where I just start going a little bit crazy, but it really kind of helps it, I don't know, it just feels really magical. I took my Pigma Micron pen and did some outlining. Um, and then I decided to go around the entire hand with this white paint. And I feel like that really helped it stand out. I felt like before it was really kind of um, getting a little bit lost in the background and that kind of helped it pop a little bit more. And I, I'm really happy with that. Um, and then I took the gold and I added even more stars and sparkle to it because why not you know i am obsessed with the sparkle um and then i realized one of the things i felt like was missing was shadow um in the hand so i took some of that indigo and added some of those shadows just to really give it some life and i feel like that was the thing it needed like at the very end that just helped it and then I remembered that I had some more Calero colors just stuffed in a drawer somewhere. So I went and got those so I could add even more shine. So um, the one that I'm currently using is Walnut. I don't know the name of the other two. Um, I bought them so long ago, but I used the, the brown tone on the hands and then the um, pink and blue in the sky and I'll, um, kind of move the paper here in a second so you can see how shiny it is. Some people might feel like this is too much, but for me, I love it. I just feel like it's so amazing and magical. And then I'm going to pull out my Luna sticker set and I'm going to get one of the full moon stickers. I was trying to figure out where I wanted it to go and I accidentally stuck it to the paper there. So that was its new home and I just took some of that gold paint and added some details around it to kind of make it feel like it was a part of the entire thing and not just a sticker in the middle of the page. And this is my final quote page. I really, really love how this turned out and I'm very excited to be able to start doing more of this journaling where I can remind myself of the things that are going on in the world and in my life um, and just kind of have those memories. So thank you so much for joining me for this video. I know it was a long one. So for those of you who made it to the end, I appreciate it. And I can't wait to share another video with you soon. Bye. me